So we've done the 2014 and 2015's best wonder kids, according to the Guardian. Now every year they release a new batch of players, born in a certain year, and really just give a nice description about them. Now we're gonna look at the newest batch of players, not rank them like the other two videos since these players have literally just started their careers. But instead, we're gonna go through parts of the articles of players or ideas or anything like that that I find interesting. Now if you wanna go through all 60 of those players yourself, I'll leave a link in the description for the whole article. In the near future, I'll make sure I'll do the 2016 one since the five year update has been done on that article. As you see here, you see three players on this list here, which we might mention, we might not. But it does say, from the next Alfonso Davies to Dorman's Mukoko, we picked 60 of the most talented players born in 2004. You can check the progress of each of the years as well, except for not including 2014s, which is interesting. I wonder if uh, they thought that one didn't go too well. <laughs> so the first thing I wanted to note, of course, is the first player on this list, Valentin Barco. Now, what I find interesting about this is that it says he's an attacking midfielder, but he prefers to play in defense, which is quite interesting, left back specifically. The coaches prefer him to play in midfield because he has a great technical ability, but it is quite the opposite of what you would have probably seen years ago, where usually if you're playing in the midfield and you're moved to defense, it's not really something you want to do. You want to get the ball more, you want to be more in the attack, but nowadays you see fullbacks everywhere getting more of the ball, getting further up the pitch, and having a big involvement in the game, depending on what team system, of course. An easy example is Trent Alexander-Arnold. He has the qualities to play in the midfield, but he plays at fullback because that's where his strengths are best used. I just found this interesting, and apparently he's already had a couple appearances for Boca's first team, and is part of Argentina's under-17 setup, so maybe this is one to watch in the future, who knows. An interesting one here, Pierre Duomo, who is playing for Royal Antwerp right now, but it says here his biggest sin is his ambition. Now that got me thinking, what does that mean? Is Does he have like no ambition? Is he just one of those talented players that have no ambition like Ben Arfa or something like that? But no, ambition has caused him to get sold. <laughs> he previously came from the Genk Academy, which has had the names of Kevin De Bruyne and Kula Bali and such, even Leon Bailey. A lot of great talent has come from Genk, and he caused a stir at the club and wanted to move, with AC Milan being interested in him at a time, but instead, He's at Royal Antwerp, which is sure a solid club in uh, Belgium, and they paid two million for him as they clearly see the talent he has. But this is one where it's, do players sometimes think too early about a move? By too early, like, do they need to make that move yet? Or they could potentially get a lot more playing time, a lot more game experience, and gain more confidence rather than going to a different club and more than likely an academy rather than the first team at the time. Now, granted, if you have the talent, you have the talent and you're going to make it, but it is really interesting to see. The last sentence here is quite interesting. In his manual, there's a warning sign and no guarantee that he will deliver, but all the tools are there. So I feel like this one's a bit of a wild card, like, will this guy succeed in the future? Realistically, with these players on this list, they're not all going to succeed. Maybe five, six are going to reach the top, and that's maybe pushing it. Now, the countries on this list with the most players on them are Brazil and Spain, and I think Brazil is really interesting to look at as there has been a little lack of flair in Brazil in recent years. Now, it's improved since the 2014 World Cup, but there hasn't been those Neymar type talents for a while. Granted, those don't come every day, but you've seen a lot of Brazilian talents actually move to Europe really early to top clubs. Like you've seen Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, Reiner, Keiki. Granted, a lot of those guys are still young and not everyone's gonna be a superstar at 18, 19, 20, like a Neymar was in Brazil. Would it be better for these guys to get more playing time in Brazil? Or like a Romario when he went to PSV at a younger age? It's not my right to give an answer. Those players can do what they want and it's starting to work out for Vinicius now. But is that the best option? Different for each player. But it'd be interesting to see more players take that Neymar route. And one player that was inspired by Neymar is this Angelo kid. The second youngest player to make his Santos debut beating the King Pele. Like, that's insane. Guys like this, or even the Savinho guy, which I found his... All these Brazilians are actually interesting to read about, so go check that out. But... Savinho is also interesting to me because what I mentioned about the flood with Brazil earlier, they had that Joga Benito in their 2000s, like the Ronaldinho and all those incredible players. But we kind of have seen a lot of players in Brazil and football in general not really having as much flair as it used to. And this is what Savinho said. He said, football these days is a little bit boring. I want to mess it up, bring more joy to the game. And of course, this guy, he made his professional debut at 16 years of age, five months and nine days. Like, what? <laughs> Will these players go to top clubs soon? Will they go in the route of a cakey who goes to Manchester City right away when he turns 18 or 
even earlier than, than that to train with them? Or will they stay in Brazil until like they're 21, 22, build themselves a profile in Brazil, and then make a big transfer to Europe? I wonder what way each of these players will go. As of course, one of them has already moved to Shakhtar for 5 million. Now, Africa have been developing some great footballers over the years. Now you've seen, of course, Sadio Mane and Salah in Liverpool, but even with the likes of Osiman recently at Napoli, who's going to be a star, trust me. There's a lot of talent in Africa that aren't even found. And really, the ones that are found sometimes don't make the right choices for them. Sometimes they pursue Europe at any cost, even if it's maybe not to the right club. A lot of times, some of them trust the wrong people. And with players outside of Europe not allowed to go to Europe until they're 18 due to FIFA rules, it does put them at a bit of a disadvantage if they're not in a great developing structure. But Africa development is improving a lot more, but I think one player that they really hype up on here is the Ghanaian guy. Abdul Fatavu Isakaku. It, they do say he's arguably the best African prospect of his generation, which is high praise and it'll be interesting to see. Unfortunately, there haven't been any of those Youth World Cups where some of these guys could shine and showcase their skills and potentially get scouted by European teams. But with this guy, he's already been called up to the Ghanaian national team twice, so maybe he's one to watch. One thing I like about these Guardian lists is that they include players from all around the world. On the 2021 list, there's a guy from India, there's another from Indonesia. You see here, a guy from North Korea and below him, Macedonia. The Macedonia are decent, but they're not a top footballing nation. While it's very rare for any of these guys from these smaller nations footballing wise to actually become top players, I think it's cool to just give some notice to players like this and who knows, maybe they can. I mean, hopefully for Ri Il Song, it goes better than the other North Korean I've seen on this list. Now, if we go from the smaller nations footballing wise to the bigger nations, the more of those players you see on this list, I think signifies what way they're going in development. Brazil, Spain have four. In the 2014 edition, you saw France with four, I believe. And four years later, they go on and win a World Cup. Not with those players specifically. Well, actually, one of them actually did. The point is, France has become a conveyor belt of talent. You see new talents left, right, and center. And there's other great talents on this list as well. And not on this list either. Norway on the 2015 one had a couple. Now they're getting close to qualifying for a World Cup playoff. But interesting things from these bigger nations, like Ernest Poku who was in a fourth division amateur side just a couple years ago and now is playing for AZ Alkmaar. Or even Jao Felix's brother who's on this list and Jao Felix saying he's more talented than him. Of course, with 60 players on this list, I read through every single one by myself and wrote some notes about it. But by the time I got to this Russian player, it really dawned on me. Records are meant to be broken, of course, but how many of them are gonna get broken by these young players? Because you keep seeing records of players in certain leagues, youngest player to ever play in this league. And there's several of those on this list, whether it's youngest debutant for the club, youngest debutant in the league, youngest goal scorer, youngest whatever. It's incredible, and this Russian player really put the cherry on top of that. There's so many, but it's not just your Russia's Denmark's or even smaller nations than that breaking these records. But you see Mukoku on this list, who's the youngest Bundesliga player of all time, youngest Bundesliga goal scorer, youngest player to appear in the Champions League. It's just like the more the years go on, these records keep getting broken, and are we gonna see a 14-year-old play one day in a top league? Like, I, I hope not, because that's a little ridiculous. Are we heading into a generation where there's a lot of super talents at a younger age? Football is a growing sport around the world, not just with people watching it, but people playing it, and actually the development of the sport improving in many regions around the world. I think it's a trend we need to just keep our eye on in the future. And I hope it does continue like this because with the World Cup becoming 48 teams, you want more countries to actually have more talented players and being able to compete with the bigger nations. Now with the Guardians next generation for 2021, the best players on this list is pretty clear. They mentioned one already in the title with Mukoko. And really the other standout is Gavi from Barcelona, getting starts for the Spanish national team at age 17, which is Yawn ridiculous. It's not starts against a minnow, it starts against Italy and France, two of the best nations in the world. But people are saying about this guy that he's a mix of Iniesta and Xavi, and it is ridiculous pressure, but maybe he can do it. Now, there's not too many players on here that are quite standout just yet. Of course, they're just 17. There's a lot of time for these guys to really develop and turn themselves into stars. Even in five years, if we recap these players again, some of them might not be at the top level yet, but they could still develop in their late 20s. Of course, I do want to mention the Canadian Jaquil Marshall Ruddy, because I'm Canadian myself and it's one to watch hopefully. I'm also Polish so Kasper Urbanski is on this list too. Now unless if you pay attention to younger talent more closely compared to others, you're not going to know most of these players on this list which is why it's interesting to learn about them. Mukoko and Gavi are like one of the few that I've recognized. But then I went to Nicholas Siri, the last player on this list and it mentions a perfect hat trick. I remember being on Reddit one day and seeing a video of this. It was this specific video here where it shows this guy scoring a perfect hat trick 
One with his head, well taken there. A beautiful chip with his left foot, which for a 16 year old, that's that's just nasty, what? And getting a hat-trick goal with a shot from outside of the box with his right foot. Like, this guy's 16 and taking these goals really well. I don't really care what level you're at. Those are well-taken goals. Now granted, he did do that at Danubio. Who do play in Uruguay, but Uruguay, but Uruguay is second tier. He did move clubs to Montevideo City Torque, which is owned by City Football Group, which not sure how I feel about that, but that's a discussion for another day. He is getting game time in the Premier Division in Uruguay, granted it's 53 minutes at the time of this recording, but it's something I recognized from this list and thought, yeah, why not show it? Now I've only scratched the surface with this list, but I thought I'd just mention it and you know, maybe you can check it out and maybe in five years, we can do a tier list on this if that's still relevant. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. But also make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and why not check these videos afterwards.